A tool post grinder for my Myford lathe. Part 1. Some ideas for a simple tool post grinder to fit a Myford ML7R lathe. What you're looking at at the moment is a tool post grinder that they use in the Myford factory. All it is is a small electric drill which has a grinder stuck in the chuck and this can be used for a variety of different functions. This particular Super 7 in the Myford workshop is used for a variety of different things including using the tool post grinder to enlarge the internal diameter of some special washers that they use. Quite a while ago I bought this. It's a bench mounted unit which supports a Proxon Micromot motor tool. I've even bought another one of these because I want to use it in my second workshop and this one's going to support a battery operated Proxon Micromot motor tool. These are very simple units and the design is quite good. You can swivel the position of the drill to any way you want it really. This is one of my battery operated Proxon motor tools. I've had it for a while and it's done a lot of work. I cannot fault this in any way. So I bought a new one for my second workshop and here they are both together. I'll fit a battery to the new one and I can compare them side by side. This is the old one that I've had for some time now and as you can hear it sounds and works very well. And here's the brand new one fitted with a brand new battery. In case you're wondering why it sounds different, it's about a semitone higher than the old one. That's because I've just fitted a new battery and furthermore it's just been charged. I've fitted the old battery into the charger. I want to be able to fit one of these rechargeable Proxon motor tools to work in my Myford lathe. But unlike the one in the Myford workshop I don't want it to be there all the time. I know you can unbolt it but I want to make this a very quick release. My logic tells me to make a specially shaped metal bracket to fit in one of the tool post holders. I'm going to place the motor tool on the bench alongside one of the tool post holders. You can roughly see what I'm going to do. I looked for a suitable piece of metal just to test the principle and all the pieces of metal I had were too big but I found this piece of angle. It's quarter of an inch thick and this will do just to prove the concept. Once again if you look at the Myford setup you can see that the part that holds the drill is a very substantial piece of metal which in turn is bolted to a piece of angle that fits on the cross slide. With the help of a felt tip pen I marked the approximate position for the drill on this piece of steel angle. This is very approximate but my eye tells me that it's in the right place, well at least it's in the middle of the piece of bar. In this clip I'm marking the cutoff point, but in reality I marked this in the wrong place. It's unimportant because this is only a mock up. All I need to do now is remove the piece of angle from the tool post, take it over to my bandsaw and cut it to the right length, or in this case the wrong length. To be perfectly honest, to make a proper tool post grinder I would not do it this way, but this will be fine for a quick mock up for a proof of concept. I cut the piece of metal to length using the larger of my two bandsaws. And here it is on the bench cleaned up slightly, the position marked to drill the hole. And with the help of my digital caliper I found out what the size of hole was that I needed to drill in the piece of metal, 20mm. Over now to the drilling machine and I fitted the piece of angle in the machine vise. Notice it's not touching the piece of wood that's just there to stop it from dropping, which it didn't and the drill easily went all the way through. I do not have a 20mm drill, but I have one of these, a stepped hole cutter. I'll try this. The part that I've marked with a felt tip pen is actually 20mm diameter. My drilling machine has never been good. It's a record drilling machine and it's terrible. It vibrates and the column wobbles about. I think I'm going to splash out and buy an old Fobco star drill. I used to have one of those many years ago and I swapped it for the milling machine that I have and really in retrospect I wish I hadn't have done that. With the help of some WD-40 and a bit of patience in no time at all I had a 20mm diameter hole almost all of the way through the piece of steel. Here you see the Proxon motor tool fitted into the hole in the piece of metal 
and a piece of metal fitted into the tool post. And as you can see, it's not fitted all the way in because I cut it too short. The worst part about making the tool post grinder like this is I will not be able to get the centre of the grinder to match the centre of the lathe. To make a tool post grinder support that fits in one of these removable tool posts, I would really need to machine a block from a large lump of steel. Making the part this way is going to take quite a while. There must be a quicker way. When I fit the tool post back into the holder, you can see the principle. The problem you can clearly see is I cannot get the centre of the drill bit, which would be holding the grinder, anywhere near the centre of the chuck. The more I looked at this arrangement, the more I realised there is a much simpler way of doing it, and I've shown you this already. I'll dismantle it so you can see how it works. It's a simple ball joint that is clamped down into a socket. Very simple and very effective. The one on the bench doesn't move at all. It once worked loose, but I just retightened the screw. This one is brand new. Here I'm putting it back together. The more I look at this Proxon motor tool bench mount, and then look at the Myford, the more I see a very simple solution to my problem. Obviously, I don't need to use this large clamp. I'll put that in a drawer for safekeeping. The good thing is, if I use this unit on my Myford lathe's cross slide, I can quickly remove it and clamp it to the bench down in my other workshop. For me, anything that wastes time is just a pain. Here you can see what I propose to do. I'm going to fit this part in the position that I'm showing in the video. It's ever so slightly larger than it needs to be for the slots in the table, but I have a plan to make everything work, and I'll show that in the next video. All I need to find in the workshop is a suitable piece of rectangular steel bar. If everything goes according to plan, fitting and removal of this unit will be simplicity itself. More about that in the next video. For the moment, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.